Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. So my tree was looking a little bit, I felt like it needed a little bit more. So I have the Grinch at 36 inches just standing up next to my tree and he looks great, but I really wanted to do this hand with the ornament that I've seen so many times. So I wanna show you how to do that. All right, so let's bring in um, the other Grinch, the, the rest of it. So let me find it first and I'm gonna show you um, this is the one that I did at 36 inches. And the reason why I'm bringing it in is because I'm trying to give the illusion of um, him on one side, my tree right here, and then this arm holding out to the second tree and grabbing the ornament from the second tree. So I sort of wanted to know like how big this hand should be. So what I did was I... Um, made him 36 inches so that I had a visual of what that would look like. And then I'm gonna bring this in because this I've modified a little bit. So let me um, bring in the image that I bought from Etsy. So first of all, the image was flipped. Um, so let's, and uh, okay. So I'm gonna bring it over here. Um, I'm gonna go to flip and I want flip horizontal because I want it flipped the other way. My tree is gonna be in the middle. So try to imagine, or if you just go on Instagram, then you would be able to see it. But I have a six foot tree here. So the Grinch is gonna be on one side, the six foot tree, and then the four foot tree is gonna be here. So the hand holding this ornament is basically coming off of the four foot tree. So this is what I have. I have the hand here. Um, I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller so I get a better idea of what it looks like. Okay. So this was the actual size that I made it. I realized that this hand is way bigger than it would be, but keep in mind that I'm gonna have the tree in between and he's gonna be reaching out. So there's not, while there is a point of reference, right, because we can see everything, it's not right next to each other, so I felt like I could do the hand a little bit bigger. I also wanted the ornament. I wanted to personalize the ornament. Um, so I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. Let me see how big did we make this originally. Oh, right about here. So that looks like a perfect fit. So see the hand is a little bit bigger, but like I said, it's not gonna be right next to each other. There's gonna be a tree in between and it's six foot tree. It's a skinny tree, but nonetheless six foot. So it's kind of like, um, you won't be able to tell so much. Um, so I wanted the hand here, but I wanted the ornament bigger. And because it's a perfect circle, this is what we did. So. This is all good, right? You can see that it's already 13 inches long. So that means it is an off the mat um, tutorial, but barely off the mat, right? And it doesn't have to be off the mat if you had 12 by 24 cardstock, um, but I'm not gonna use 12 by 24 cardstock on this, so I will be slicing it. But let's go and make this ornament bigger, okay? So what I did was let's ungroup it. And basically, uh, let's duplicate the red because I'm gonna, ooh, oh, okay, I forgot to look at this. So this is our background. I do want it a solid background, so I'm gonna go to contour, and this could be for any Etsy file or any file that you buy from Creative Fabrica, um, I don't know, um, font bundles, what's the other one? Image, I, I can't remember. <laughs> anyway, sometimes it comes like this. So what you wanna do is you wanna hide all and that will give you the solid black that we want. I do want this. Okay, so we have the solid black. Let's see what else we have here. Uh, so we can get rid of this. We have our red, and our red is, we can't ungroup it because it's grayed out, so I'm gonna wanna slice this out. And I'm just gonna take a circle. I wanna separate the two because I don't wanna cut it like this. Um, I want to save some space when I go to my mat to cut. I want to put them right next to each other. Um, but I also wanted to make this bigger. So the way you want to do it is I'm going to slice this out, okay? So when you're slicing, you can slice two things at one time. It's going to be my gray circle and the red, um, the two red pieces. The two red pieces is counted as one image. So um, when you're slicing, you want to make sure, like in this case, we want to separate the two. So one of our pieces has to be wholly covered by the, by the piece that we're slicing out. And then the other piece can't be in it. So here we go. You're going to take these two items and you're going to slice. 
So now we could get rid of the slice results, which is um, these two gray things, right? And see now this piece is separated. Okay, so I'm gonna put this back just so that you can see what it looks like. So here's this piece. Um, now our fingers, I'm gonna zoom in so you can see it a little bit better. Our hand is in four pieces, right? I really don't like it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add pieces so that I can um, weld them all, okay? So I'm gonna take this, make it smaller, and I'm also going to unlock it because I might wanna make it more of an elliptical shape. I'm gonna finish my thought there, okay. So I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. Let's see, maybe something like this. And his hand, his fingers are such funny shapes anyway. So this is not gonna change it. Let me, and I will duplicate it so that you can have an original to look at. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. Oops, duplicating the wrong thing. Hold on, let's get rid of that. Okay, I wanna duplicate this little shape right here because I want to connect um actually I'm just going to bring in a circle hold on okay and I'm going to basically attach the rest of the fingers so I'm make this small enough bring it over And I'm just gonna make it a little skinny, but I'm gonna attach everything, maybe like that, okay? So now I'm gonna grab all three items and I'm gonna weld it. So here's my new hand, right? My new hand is one lovely piece. <laughs> and so I don't have to keep track of all the fingers. I mean, you can't really tell me that one looks better than the other. Actually, I can tell you that because I feel like the welded one looks more natural than this one. So I'm gonna piece it back together so that you can see it. I think that looks like it's part of the file that I didn't even do anything. And so I'm gonna delete this. And this cuff is in two pieces and I also wanna make it one. I mean, this image is super easy to do, right? I mean, it's only a handful of pieces. We're barely gonna slice it, but no one's gonna know that it shouldn't be connected. So I'm just gonna connect it and make it easier on myself. So now I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna weld it. Um, and you know, it did that to me last time as well. I don't know why it looks like it's two pieces. So I'm gonna bring in another circle. I'm gonna weld it again. It's so funny that it did it, it, did it twice. It's like a, a little glitch that won't go away. Okay, so I'm gonna put it right in the middle. Hopefully this time it will weld for us. So let's click on weld and see what it does. Okay, so now it's one piece, right? So here's my cuff. And again, to me, it looks really natural. Like, I don't know, was it supposed to be in two pieces? I don't think so. <laughs> All right, so let me move this over a little bit. <clears throat> and All right, so we have our big piece here. I wanted to make this ornament bigger because I want to put my name and I don't want to struggle with the small font. Um, so, and because it's a circle, this will be easy to do. So I'm gonna duplicate my red, and I'm gonna make it big. And I'm gonna move the red out of the way. Okay, so I'm gonna move this here. And you see how I made it really big? So now I'm gonna grab these two things and I'm gonna weld it, and it's gonna turn black because I want the black background, right? But I'm gonna move this to the back, arrange, send to the back so that you can still see everything. And now all you need to do is bring this red up front, make it bigger to match the outline. And I, I did this on purpose because our black background is 14 inches long, so I know I'm gonna slice it somewhere in this, um, in this ornament. 
So I could make this more uniform and more black showing, but I didn't. I actually made it like really thin so you can barely see the seams. It looks like a seamless project. All right, so here's our red. Let's bring in my text. Um, I did the Stormers. I'm just gonna do the Stormers section, okay? So Stormer was in um, my new favorite font. It's called Southmore. It's from Creative Fabrica. Um, you do have to purchase it, but it's so worth it. Um, it would be good if I typed out the name correctly. Okay. So here's Stormers, and I'm going to show you how to um, group it together and weld it. So this is what it looks like. I'm going to bring it over here. When you purchase it, it does come with a commercial use um, license, so that's nice. Um, and I like Creative Fabrica. I actually have a subscription to Creative Fabrica, and I love it for the fonts because for the first time, I don't have to worry about which font has a license, where did I get it from. They have so many fonts that I just end up using it there and I'm not even keeping track of my fonts anymore. And they also have Font Cloud, which is free. Um, I have a video on that. It is the best way to keep track of your fonts because it's a free login and you upload all your fonts there. So one, you can type in like the word welcome, for instance, and you could see what welcome looks like in all the fonts that you have. So that's amazing. But what I really, really like is um, since I've had the Cricut, I've already had, I don't know, like three different devices. So, and you know, your fonts are, are on each device, right? So what's cool about Font Cloud is because you log in, um, I can go to my friend's house who also has a Cricut. I can log on over there and we can share our fonts or, you know, I have access to my fonts because what will happen is I'll use her laptop. I want to use this font. Well, I don't have it, right? Um, so I can log in on her device, download this font, and now I can use it. So it's nice when you go to someone's house and do that, but I don't, that probably doesn't happen that often. What, what has happened to me is my laptop died and all the fonts on there died. And so now if I log into Font Cloud, I can download all the fonts that I'm used to um, onto my new device. And it's free, that's what I like about it. <laughs> okay, so because I'm only doing one last name, I will connect it here. Normally, if I do a bunch of names, I will do it in Inkscape or Font Lab Pad, anywhere but Design Space because I don't wanna connect each one of these letters. So if you're doing it this way though, ungroup it. And some people will not ungroup it. What they'll do first is they will go, here, let me undo that. Let me show you. Because you may like to do this. I just don't bother because, okay, let's make it really big. So some people, hold on, let me make it big, sorry. And make sure that you can still see it. I moved my, oh my gosh, hold on. I moved my face to the bottom left, so hopefully that doesn't get in the way. Okay, now some people will just go to letter space and decrease the space, okay? That doesn't work because if you notice, look at the difference between the space between the T and the O. It is a pretty big um, space right there. But look at my R and my M, it's tiny, right? So at some point, while I decrease the letter space, it's still not gonna work because this will be connected, but these two won't be connected. So I just ungroup from the beginning and just change it the way I wanna change it. I want all my letters to connect. So, and I like bounce lettering, so it's kinda like up and down. So I'm gonna make this go up a little bit. And because this is really high, I'm gonna have to keep in mind that I'm gonna wanna lower some of my letters. So here's my O. My O has to be up here though, because it has to connect to, the, to that. But my R, I'm gonna start moving things down. So I'm gonna connect it here. I'm gonna connect it here. Maybe move this up a little bit. Cause you don't want it all on one line, right? You want it to be, look kind of natural, kind of bouncy. Okay, and then here's my S. That 
looks pretty good, right? Now you can grab, oh, well, before I grab it all, hold on. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the color so that you can see. If you miss this next step, it's not gonna look good. I'm gonna change it to a light color so you can kind of see what it looks like. And I'm going to change, while you may not see the issue, when I rearrange this, I'm gonna send some letters to the front and you'll see why it doesn't look good. Because when you cut it, you will see it like this. So what will happen is, and let me zoom in a little bit more so you can really see how much I hate this. <laughs> Do you see the R? It goes into the M. You're gonna see that cut line. You're gonna see this T right here. Let me bring this to the front. You're gonna see it cut into the O. It's Each one of these letters are gonna cut separately and while they're all next to each other, it's gonna look like it's sitting on top of each other. What you wanna to do to avoid this is you need to grab all of this and you need to weld it. Welding it makes it a fluid one image. So see now my S goes blends into the T, the T, that tip is blended into the O. So now it's all as if it's one image, which is what we want. And you want that for your cursive. That's the way it's, it's designed to look. That's the way the designer cre created it. It's just that design space does not, um, I think it's called kerning, um, does not kern your letters, which is very annoying. Do you hear me? Design space because no other platform does that. <laughs> okay, so let me make this bigger. This is going to be in white. It's the way I cut it. I cut it with um, white glitter HTV. Um, all right, so it goes here, the goes there. Let me zoom out so you can see what it looks like. Okay, so this is what we have, right? Everything is good. Um, hold on, let me delete this. This is what we have. So what we need to do is the black is too big, right? And actually, I'm going to delete the Grinch as well. Okay, so now we have just our piece. So our black is a little bit too long. So I'm just gonna bring in, we only need to slice one to make this work. So I'm not gonna build my grid that I normally do. But I'm just gonna make this big. Oops, darn this black. Okay, I'm gonna put it right around here. And I'm gonna slice the square and my black image. And then I'm gonna get rid of my slice results because I don't need that. So now my black image is in two pieces. This piece is uh, five and a half inches by 4.3 inches basically. And this hand is now 11.4 by 9.7. So it can cut on my Cricut with 12 by 12 cardstock, right? Don't forget I have the up here, but let's go to the make it screen so you can see what it looks like. All right, so my whites. Um, this is not what I want because I want Stormer to be on HTV. I want this to be glitter white cardstock. So this is how you're gonna fix it. You click on the three dots, move object, and we're gonna create a new page for this. And it's gonna be in white, but it's gonna be by itself because on this one, you're gonna also wanna mirror it, right? Because it's glitter HTV. Let's look at our white cuff. So this is gonna be white glitter cardstock, this is going to be black cardstock. I would probably use 65 inch, I mean, 65 pound, but actually now that I've just said it, this little piece right here, this little ornament string is so thin, I would actually recommend doing 110 pound cardstock just so that this part is not so thin. It is gonna go on a foam board, but even the foam right there, because this is so thin, it's, it, it's only gonna support so much. So I would, um, I would actually, yeah, take that back and use 110 pound cardstock just to make this part a little bit more sturdy. All right, here's our black cardstock as well. Um, here's our single green hand all connected. Awesome. Here's our red and our um, HTV. 
and then you're going to iron it on. I already have the video that um, to assemble everything, so it's all ready for you to make as well. Let me know what you think. Please post your feedback, comments, questions, and then if you have a special request, let me know as well. You'll post it here, and then you can also send me an email with additional details or files or whatever it is to anne, A-N, at theuselesscrafter.com. All right, thanks guys, bye.